Let's go down in prayer now. Oh, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today, Lord. It's one more time that we get the opportunity to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Yeah. Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how, Lord, asking for forgiveness of all of our sins, Lord. Ones that we commit deliberately, ones that we don't even know we're committing. Yes, thank you. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you. Lord, because of you, we are able to do exceedingly yeah. abundantly above all things, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings that you provide for yeah. this branch of Zion, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask for a special prayer for our pastor, yes. his family, that they travel up and down the highways to bring us the word, Lord, each week. Lord, we ask for a special blessing for this man today that's going to bring the word that you sent to us, Lord. Lord, we ask that we see all of you and none of you, Lord. Yeah. Lord, as we go through our days and our weeks and our months and our years, Lord, that we'll be so careful to put you first in our lives, knowing that if we put you first, everything else is possible. Yeah. Lord, we ask that you bless the sick, bless the shut-in. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask that you continue to heal continue to heal our bodies, yes, our minds, our soul. Lord, we pray for this nation, Lord, yeah. as we are struggling, as a nation, as a world, Lord. Lord, but you are in control. Yes, you are. And help us to not forget that, Lord. Yes. Lord, as we go on our days, we ask yeah. that we'll continue to put you first. Yeah. Put you first in our lives, Lord, that everything will work out for us. Yes. And Lord, at the end of the day, we'll be so careful to give you all the glory all the honor, all the praise. This is the mighty, matchless, miraculous name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen.
further supplies. Please contact Sister Lynette Carter to register school-age children no later than today, August the 4th. The school supplies will be distributed to those who have registered next Sunday, August the 11th, after morning worship service. On Friday, August the 9th, the men and boys will be going to a baseball game at the Diamond in Richmond. A sign-up sheet is placed in the lobby for those interested. The game starts at 6.35 p.m. The Mass Choir will render music for the Jericho Baptist Church in Carolina on Wednesday, August the 7th at 7 o'clock p.m. Let's continue to pray for our sick and shut in and each other. This concludes our announcements I received for this morning. Have another one.
this morning. We do have that, that one quick announcement, Sister Brenda, myself, we got together now. So we get this, it's all on me. Y'all can blame me for it. I'm getting in touch. So with that being said, we're not going to do a meet and greet this morning. We're going to wave it to each other. And I promise you, no, I promise you. Lord willing, we're going to do a meet and greet next week. All right? All right? All right? So with that being said, hey, I am. I see my folks out there. One thing, I told my mom to put them on his power. I saw them at our ground table. But y'all make some noise coming from Atlanta, Georgia, brother Walter Pullen, Raymond Johnson. He said, don't put me on the spot. But he's there with his sweet brother Laura right now. And brother Walter, we love you, brother. And last, last but not least, um, brother Heath. I see you in there. She thought she stuck in on me over there back then. Y'all just feel like that. We can pray to God for her in the house. But with that being said, let's, let's, let's get serious for a second, all right? All right, this is the revival lineup, all right? Sunday service for revival. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. I know we can get it in the year, but we're going to bring it back. 12 o'clock. So the, so the people say 9 too early, 10 too early, 11 too early, 12 o'clock, they're going to be right here. All right? And what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to eat afterwards, and then the evening service will be at 4 o'clock. Prayer and praise at 3.30. 4 o'clock, we got a traveling choir coming down. So that will be Pastor Justin Simon from the World, the Word Works Worship Center in Portsmouth, Virginia. Monday night, we will have Reverend Griffith, excuse me, Reverend Ronald Griffith, Jr. from Chosen from Completion Ministries. Tuesday night, we will have Reverend Wakely Kelly from Restor Restoration Christian Center. And Wednesday night, we will have Bishop Dwayne Fields from Oxford, Mount Zion. Amen. Amen. And from what I'm saying, prayer and praise is at 6 30 and service is at 7. But I do want to remind you all that as of last year, the school systems have moved school up the start week. So that's the start week of school. So we will be in here all night, but we're going to get it in and we're going to make it plentiful at the same time and make the most of it. But we ain't going to have a 10 hour round. But we encourage you all to come out. Join us and have a good time and celebrate with God. Say amen. Amen. amen.
is none like him. Come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah. When I was down and out, there is none like him. When I couldn't see my way, there is none like him. When sickness tried to hit my body, there is none like him. So this morning, my response is praise. Can we worship him in this place? Come on, hallelujah. Oh God, we bless you. We lift your name up. Just consider just for a few moments. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Just consider what you need of God this morning. I asked Officer Mount Zion this about a month ago. I said, does your praise meet the expectation that you have for God? So when we come into worship, we all not giving God some praise anyhow. No matter how it looks, we ought to just give a praise. Because I learned something that my praise unlocked the door to my ultimate deliverance. So this morning we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor your pastor, Pastor Griffin, in his absence. Give it up for your pastor this morning. Greetings from Enon Baptist Church in Temple Hills, Maryland, where my pastor is Reverend L. Nolan Fox. It is just so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. My sister joined me this morning. Thank you, girl. I didn't think she was going to make it. She told me 9 a.m. It was too early for church. But she snuck in any house. I want to appreciate her for that. Got my cousins over here, Sonia in the building. So there's a word uh, from the Lord found in the book of Psalm. If you would turn with me to Psalm 34. Thank God for Miss Carrie and her husband. They are some of my favorite people in the world. Psalm 34. And I'm going to apologize in advance. I didn't come to preach this morning. I just came to have a conversation with the believers. Is that all right this morning? That's all right. I shouldn't apologize. You don't have to apologize when you're talking about. <laughs> Psalm 34. And beginning at the first verse, if you're there, you'll find these words. I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked up unto him, and were like and their faces were not ashamed. Verse 6 says, The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that feared him and delivered them. Verse number 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. You may be seated in the presence of of the Lord, let us pray to God. We thank you this morning. We pause right now, God, to invite your spirit into this pulpit. God, I admit I'm weak, God, and I'm not capable, but with you, you give me strength. So right now, God, I need your spirit to open our hearts and our minds to receive from you, God. God, if you do that, we'll be so careful to give your name all the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk just for a few moments about a call for a praise break. A call for a praise break. Before I get started, yesterday I was invited to a rodeo in Dodgeville. I had never been to a rodeo before, but they ride bulls and do all kinds of crazy stuff at the rodeo. But something interesting happened at the rodeo yesterday. There's a clown 
that comes out and distract the bull when they kick them off of it. But the clown came out with a message, and I'm going to give it to y'all. He came out, he said, anybody come to have a good time today? Everybody just cheer. He said, but I see some people not cheering. So what I want you to do, he said, I want you to forget about your house note. He said, I want you to forget about your car note. I want you to forget about everything that you got going on so that you can have a good time tonight. So my encouragement before we get in the word this morning is that you forget about what you got going on so that you can focus on hearing what the Lord is saying to us this morning. It's important for us to sometimes take a step back from life. Because life be life and sometimes and trials and tribulations happen. Life getting the best of us and the worst thing we can do is focus on the hell that we're going through. But in the text this morning, David gives us a call for praise for him. So my question this morning is, have you ever found yourself in a place full of stress? Not knowing how the outcome of your situation would go. Fighting everyday battles with everything that you have only to find yourself feeling defeated. I wonder if I'm in the right place this morning. If we can be honest, sometimes we feel down when we get to places that seem to have us bound. It's in moments like these that David in the text this morning begins to make a declaration. That no matter how it looks, David said, I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. David in the text was held bound to the Philistines. It's important for us to know that David in this text was writing from a cave. When he wrote this song, he was in a cave. And David is saying to us today that when situations come up in life that cause us to want to go into a cave and hide from life, that we can have an anyhow praise. Watch this because God is able. Please, sir, please, ma'am, encourage your neighbor just for one moment. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, God is able. Come on, y'all got the wrong. Y'all too quiet in here. Turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, oh, neighbor, God is able. It's important for us as we go through trials and tribulations to remind ourselves constantly. That God is able. David understood that the things that had came up against him, they caused him to act foolish. And I know none of y'all act foolish in the church, but sometimes life happens and I tend to act foolish. But David said even when he acted foolish, he wasn't fo so foolish that he would neglect praise of the Lord for giving him wisdom through his trials. So my encouragement for you this morning is simple. Don't forget to praise God when things go wrong in your life. Believe us, we must not lose our praise when we find ourselves going through tough times. The text suggests that his praise shall continually be in my mind. I'm walking through the text this morning. David in the text made it very clear that his boasting is in the Lord and not himself. Oftentimes we get it twisted because we like to put ourselves up on a pedestal when we come through situations. But David understood that his deliverance was due to God and not him. I stop by this morning to remind you that you are not my boasting in the Lord. Our Lord is incomparable. Our Lord is matchless. Our God is powerful and able to deliver us from everything. Wonder if there's anybody in here glad that we serve a God who is it? Is there anybody in here glad that we serve a God who is all powerful? Is there anybody who's glad that we serve a God who specializes in the impossible? So the question is, how do we respond? David says, when you don't feel like it can get better for you, when you find yourself in a place of doubt. David says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on. Let us exalt his name together. This word magnify in the text simply means to perceive it as bigger. So regarding the Lord, we have to magnify him. Why? 
Because if we be honest, sometimes our situations present themselves as being big. But we, when we magnify the Lord, watch this, our focus stays on Him. Because we see and believe that our God is bigger than our problems. Come on. Our God is bigger than our struggles. Our God is bigger than cancer. Come on. Our God is bigger than financial work. Our God is bigger than anything that comes up against us. So how we respond to this situation is we learn to magnify the Lord. Because God is bigger than anything that you can imagine. God is bigger than the thing that has came up against you. So don't lose your praise when all hell breaks loose in your life. Because I read somewhere that when praises go up, blessings come down. You wonder why you can't find the right blessing. It's because when pain came in your life, you stopped praising God. But God sent me here this morning to remind you no matter where you find yourself at, don't lose your praise. Hallelujah. And after You've done all you can. After you praise your way through. After you shouted all through the church. David said, I saw the Lord. <laughs> David said, I look to the Lord in love and trust. And this is where I wanted to get to this morning. Because oftentimes we praise and we praise and we praise. And it seems like nothing happens. But it's in this that David teaches us that we must sought the Lord. This is a powerful testimony. Because when David sought the Lord, look what the text says. God heard him with love, sympathy, and action. And watch how God responds when we look to him for help. The text says he delivered David from all his fears. And I wonder if there's anybody in here this morning who needs to be delivered from some of the things that you fear. Come on, I didn't come to play this morning. I came to be real this morning. Sometimes life leads us down to places that cause us to want to be afraid. But David said, I sought the Lord. And he heard me. And he delivered me from all of my fears. And I don't know if we need to hear this this morning, but when you cry out to God, understand that God hears you. And he sees your tears. I wonder if you would just encourage yourself. Just for a few moments. I'm almost done. Trust me. But encourage yourself and remind yourself from the place that you're in right now. That God is listening. Sometimes it's hard for us to understand this because life happens. We get down late at the midnight hour. Nobody gets our phone calls. Don't even feel comfortable talking to nobody about it. And it feels like God is far away. But God sent me here this morning to remind you that he still listens. David said in the text right around verse number seven, number, verse number six, he said, the poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Let me put this in perspective just for a few moments. David called himself a poor man. David learned how to humble himself in such a way that he compared himself to being poor. And he said, I'm a poor man and I cry out to the Lord. And that's half the battle. Is that we so rich that ain't got nothing. Money ain't everything. That's right. David Understood that he was poor spiritually. He needed God to show up on his behalf. It won't no time for putting words together and making them rhyme. It won't time for long prayers. It won't time for me to cry out and cry out and cry out only for nobody to hear. But David said, I cried out to the Lord from a low place. And sometimes believers, life can knock us down to some of the lowest places we never know we find ourselves in. But David said, when it got low, I cried out to the Lord. And I came by Jerusalem this morning to remind you that you ought not mind crying out to the Lord from a humble place. You ought not mind getting on your knees and saying, Lord, I need you. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I need you to show up on my behalf. Because David encouraged us that when he cried out to the Lord, 
that the Lord heard him. And I came to confirm this message today that you've been crying out to God for a long time. And the Lord heard your cry. And the Lord is working out your situation. And David said, he saved me from all my troubles. And I can just imagine David fighting giants. People coming up against him, he don't even know to fight. And David said, even in that, I hid behind God. And because I magnified him, he was bigger than what was presented in front of me. So now my cry is not about what I got going on. My cry is to God because I know he's big enough to get in between me and what I got going on. So if you find yourself struggling in life right now, understand that God is bigger than what's presented in front of you. And all you got to do lay in the midnight hour when you don't feel nothing happening, you just cry out to the Lord. And I assure you that he hears you. And he's able to save you from all of your troubles. What's interesting is, because I know you might be saying, how does that have to do with a praise prayer? David said, Lord, help me. And the Lord showed up. David said, Lord, deliver me. And the Lord showed up. David said, I'm bound to these people. And the Lord showed up and freed him. And after all the hell that David went through, I mean hell on wheels. You know, some of the biggest hell years we'll find is in our family. I ain't mean to say that. I ain't mean to say that. So David had experienced some things with some family and friends that has caused him to feel bound to what he had going on. And even in this, David said, I cried out to the Lord and he helped me. So what does that have to do with the praise break? Turn in your Bibles to verse number eight and I'm going to my seat. After all the hell that David had went through, after all the trials, the tribulations, the late night cries, listen what David said, that the Lord heard me. Now that he heard me, oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. So David have understood at this point that God had brought about us some things. And now not only could he feel good, he could taste it. Y'all were sat around grandma's kitchen waiting for that meal to come out of the oven. After all the smelling you went through, your stomach was just growling, growling, waiting for it to come out. And then when it finally came out, you got to taste that bad boy. It was like, oh my God. That's what David said. When God brought him out, oh, I can taste it. I can see that the Lord is good. And God has you in this place that you're in right now. Because he wants you to be anxiously waiting to taste and see how good he is. That's how we can praise him. Because I understand that I may not be going through the best trial and tribulation right now. I may be experiencing some pain from my past right now. I may be going through some things. People walk away from me. Family walk away from me. But I understand that when it's all said and done, I will taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. We have to learn how to continue to praise God when we don't feel like nothing happened. We have to understand that even though it may not look good, we got to continue to praise God. We got to understand that when family and friends go crazy, we have to continue to cry out to God. And I heard somebody say earlier, the world is in trouble. No, it ain't. The people of God need to start crying out to Him because He's bigger than what this world got going on. We see what's going on and we surrender. Oh, yeah, that's too big. Yo, our God is bigger than what's going on. And David confirmed it in the message. David said, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how bad it seems. I'm going to lift up the Lord. Because when I did, He heard my cry. And there's so many people struggling trying to get delivered. But the problem is, is that we got so big in the church that we learned, we forgot how to cry out to God. Or we don't have prayer praise no more. We don't have prayer service no more. They took Jesus out of the school system. We don't even barely pray all our food no more. 
for. Because we have lost the sense of what crying out to God looks like. But in 2024, God is looking for a generation that don't mind crying out to him when it don't even look good. He's looking for a people of God, come on, who don't mind saying, God, I know it may not look good out there, but I understand that what's in here is bigger than what's out there. So now my response is that I'm going to praise God. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus, come on, and all that he's done for me, the old folk used to say it like this, he is the great I am, come on. The old folk would say, he is the bridge over trouble. So instead of hiding, I, I ran down. I ran down. 
and God worked out my situation. So if there's one here today struggling with some things, I encourage you to come. Don't tell me about it because I can't do nothing about it. But tell Jesus all about it. That's right. Give it to him and take your hands off of it and watch him work it out. So if there's one today, you can come this morning. If there's one who don't know God, you can come and accept Christ this morning. Through this church. And people be like, what is wrong with him? 
I'm trying to find my strength. The word teaches us to keep on fighting. There's a song they say, you fight on. You ought to listen to that. Because when I get on down in the slumps, I play this song and say, you fight on. So no matter what comes my way now, I got to fight. And baby girl, you just keep on fighting. When life gets hard, just keep on fighting. He will. I don't know when. Trust me, I'm still waiting. But I read somewhere that they didn't wait on the Lord. <laughs> he shall do this. So when I'm weak, I just start praising. I feel like running. I'm, I'm not going to do it now. But I don't know how I can make it. I just start running. Because I know that they didn't wait on the Lord. Don't get discouraged if you'll cease to wait. We're going to pray for this sister. Yes. Let us pray to God. We need you right now. Yes. We admit, God, that, that we've experienced some things this year that has caused us to be weak, God. You told us in your word, God, to let not our hearts be troubled. Yes. But somehow along the way, God, we've come to a place of a troubled heart. So now, God, we need you to give us strength. You told us in your word, God, to cast all of our cares on you. So we come this morning, God, with some cares. God, we come with the care of a burdened heart, God. We come with the care of pain, God. We come with the care of sickness, God. We come with the pain of uncertainty, God. We come this morning, God, asking you, God, that you will reveal yourself to us. Being bigger than what we experience, God. God, we speak strength right now in the name of Jesus. God, we rebuke depression right now in the name of Jesus. Forgive us now, God. You 
told us if we confess our sins, that you would forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now, God, help us to walk as the righteousness of God. Give her your grace. Give us your grace, God. Give us your mercy. Give us your love. Give us your peace. Give us your joy. This passes all understanding. And we'll be so careful, God, to give you all the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. Everything I need, God supplies. I'm trying not to run. Because old folks used to say it's Big Sunday at my home church. I'm trying not to run. But I just had a thought that my praise will bring me through. I just had a reminder. And when I told God no, God still said yes. We're going into communion. But I'm going to tell y'all this. I'm just pushed to do this. I did not want to be a preacher to save my life. I told God no so many times. I think I never told nobody else no that many times. But the reason why I said that is because it was in the ministry that I found some of the hardest things that I ever thought I would have to deal with. And had I not told God yes, I probably would have committed suicide January 17th. But it was because God's grace yes. and mercy. Yes. So when y'all see me running through the park, like, don't just know that I'm just praising God because I understand that if it had not been <laughs> for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. If anybody been omitted this morning, just raise your hand and we'll get you straight. Church observes and 
remembrance of Christ's sacrifice and what he did for us on Calvary's cross. This is something that believers, we should take very serious. Because if it had not been for the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I know you're custom here, but if you could turn with me to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. It's a great understanding that we must have considering communion. So, I'm a millennial, so I like to do stuff different. So y'all just roll with me, just roll with me. First Corinthians, the 11th chapter. So back in the day, church, we used to have something called responsive reading. Anybody remember that? So the leader would read one, then you read one. Y'all good with that, right? So I got my security watching, so we good. I, I, I get to the car. <clears throat> So we're going to start at verse 23, and we're going to go all the way down to the end, and when we get down to 34, we'll read it together. Is that okay? Y'all there? So verse 23 says, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tear it one for another. All together, and if any be in hunger, let him eat at home, and ye come not together to condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you right now. We thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. We ask you right now, God, to bless We ask you, God, to let us examine ourselves right now, God. Because we understand that this is a sacred moment. We ask that you bless this wafer and bless this juice, God. And we ask you to bless the condition of the believer who's taking in communion. Help remind them, God, that this is your body and blood, which was broken for us. This is how we now operate under your grace. Let us examine ourselves, God. Remove anything that's not like you right now in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. We got our bread. The Bible teaches us that this is an example of the body which was broken for us. Let us break it and eat together. This cup represents the blood that was shed for us.
without the shedding of blood, I said it already there, there's no forgiveness of our sins. So Jesus had to die. So we take this in remembrance of him. Let us drink together. The Bible makes it very clear after communion, there was no benediction. They went out into the Mount of Olives and sung a hymn. Now y'all, I can't sing. But I'm going to try. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church God bless you, go in peace.